What is up, bros? Me, Josh. Here in today's video, we are going over the USS Massachusetts. Now, if this ship looks pretty similar to something else, it is because it's almost identical to the Alabama. Well, at least was. And um, the, they did a video a long time ago where we first got the Massachusetts, and it basically was the exact same thing. Very different, very small differences. Now they've completely changed the ship, um, and it has a completely different play style and and a completely kind of different ship, although it still looks the same. Um, again, though top right corner still something to change work in progress although i don't think too much will change before this is officially launched but what have they done now looking at the ships on the just the cover judging the book by by its cover it, they look exactly the same right but one thing they have done is they've changed the entire play style of making this the first real secondary heavy usn battleship um that's really hit world of warships now you can have some you know secondary specs but imagine almost Turpitz level, German level secondaries on a USN ship. But some of the stuff we'll briefly go over because a lot of it still is basically the same. Um, same health pool, um, almost the, the same armor, this, almost the same torpedo uh, protection, which is what the Alabama is really, really good at, having a high armor uh, torpedo belt. But things you're going to be looking at differently is the artillery, the AA defense, and the concealment. Because what this ship does and needs to be, uh, in my opinion, very successful is a very high level captain specifically around its secondaries. So as you can see with a 14.5 captain, this is a 19 point. Then we're going to com compare it to the Alabama, which is a 12.9. The reason being is the Alabama can have a concealment expert captain and go into it and be a lot more stealthy and overall just a kind of normal USN battleship as well as having a high AA with almost a 97 rating, 151 at 7.2 kilometers. So again, an AA beast and a 30 second reload at 21.1 kilometers with a concealment or with a max dispersion of 271. So keep all of those in mind. Now with the Massachusetts, you have a 30 second reload at 18.3 at 243 meters so this is gonna be pretty similar to german if you've ever played a german battleship like the Tirpitz bismarck it's gonna be pretty similar to that at least that's what it felt like to me um AA, can, AA is only six kilometers so you don't get that extra boost but you're still knocking 151 but at a, at a basically a kilometer 1.2 kilometers closer and um 14.5 and the reason being is this is most likely the captain you're going to need or you know you can switch around some these ones depending on what you enjoy to play if you want you know vigilance or whatever um but you need to base it base it around its secondaries and really it seemed i tried it with just aft it was very unsuccessful i tried it with secondaries it was the manual fire control it was pretty successful then and it really seems like it does need inertia fuse to do a ton of damage um and then these are just going to be whatever as well as modules you're going to need the secondary buff which is going to be this one where you can't take the aa range so that's why you lose that little bit extra but again um losing i mean the the range is very german the secondaries are very german and uh you know it kind of doesn't work it's weird it's a very unique ship but anyways that's the difference between these two ships they're both very similar outside of those but that's the difference you're going to see now let's check out some gameplay and kind of show you guys what you're going to be expecting compared to what you normally would with a usn battleship so here we are in game with the massachusetts and we got mid-tier which isn't too bad seven to nine but we did go against a cv which isn't the worst thing in the world you still have pretty high aa but you don't feel as comfortable as i normally would with let's say like the alabama or north carolina where you do get that extra buffer of shooting down planes at 7.2. So playing a little bit closer to, let's say, a high AA ship or something, as you can see, that Neptune is off to my right, so I'm eyeing him and going to be trying to stick pretty close to, uh, some, uh, to some other AA ships and especially to my CV's fighters. And one of the downsides is I was trying to help this guy out, and in my head I've played USN with AFT and the AA range for so long that 7.2 is basically just drilled into my mind of being its effective AA range. So again, I'm clicking on these planes and even though they're gonna get relatively close, not, uh, you know, I think I, at some point they do get a little bit closer. And I'm wondering like now, how did I not shoot down any of these planes or throughout the entire uh, match? How did these things not get close enough or how am I not either plucking one of these out of the air? And our Minsk was a God by the way, because he, he didn't take a single torp on that. So which was amazing. Like right now I would technically be within that range now, he was just barely, but uh, you're so used to it. And one of the downside is, too, you do have a lackluster range. Within 20 kilometers, you're normally within a, a battleship range, no matter what battleship you're in. 
and this one you really aren't. That Cleveland selling broadside would have been an amazing target for my Alabama, would have been an amazing target for my North Carolina, but you're just not within range. But you do have those uh, secondaries to really pump in a lot of damage. But we do have a Fiji to kind of pick on. And again, I'm trying to, uh, this game I decided to play a little bit more riskier than I normally do. Um, if you've ever kind of seen it with uh, like a normal USM battleship, the normal play style is going to be bow in, using that armor, tanking as much as you can. Um, this one, I really wanted to play a little bit different and be a bit more aggressive and use these secondaries and use those manual. Cause uh, you know, the downside of this ship is yeah, you don't have range, but the, I think the, you know, you can get past that and because it's, it's a different, completely different play style. The biggest downside of this ship, in my opinion, and I talked to a bunch of other CCs in, the, in our, our CC Discord, is the requirement, it seems, to ha just have a massive, a massively high level captain to really make this work. Again, I had a normal captain where I set it up with Concealment Expert. Um, Concealment expert with uh, AFT without really going too crazy into the secondaries, and it just was nothing. It really does at least need manual secondaries to make it work, and inertia fuse just seems to be that extra little boost to really make it good. Um, and that to a normal person is going to be unattainable because it's a high level captain. Now, me, I've played a ton of games and I have a ton of experience and a, just a, a fleet of 19 point captains where I can just switch them out. Most people don't have 19 point captains or have one, maybe two. And so that's the downside. It seems like this is gonna require at least, at least a, a 14 point to make it happen. Now you can probably be pretty successful with this with uh, without inertia fuse. It just won't be pumping out that extra secondary damage. But still, even a 14 point captain is pretty tough. I think this ship, it shines. Now I don't think this ship is the greatest at, at of the tier eight battleships. I don't think it's better than the North Carolina. I don't think it's better than the Alabama, but it's actually fun, which is nice. But again, requiring such a high level captain is pretty brutal for most people um you know really you're gonna need an 18 point captain to really make this ship shine for what it's good at so um right now we don't really have any ships at uh at sea cap enemy ships so i decided to rotate the other way and we're gonna watch what happens with our neptune if he gets spotted near battleships and here we're gonna start seeing some uh secondaries pop off but it's still even like right here nine kilometers and that's one thing I noticed too with this ship is they are good secondaries if you have the right skills. But um, I was wondering what this what this game would have been if I was in interpets because I put myself uh, positionally pretty pretty good. Um, but uh, you know, I feel like I would have been getting more hits. And this is remember this is with manual um, secondaries. Um, and I was I was really wondering what this ship would ended up being. Uh, if I had, let's say, like a German battleship or something like that, something that's a bit more known for its secondaries, but still, it, it is a fun little mix on play styles because you are going to see this uh, USN battleship play style with kind of this German secondary ish uh, loadout. And this is one thing, too, I noticed the normal play style, and maybe this is a good way of getting away from it, but the normal play style of the USN battleships is bow tanking, right? You're gonna, your nose is gonna be in. And for some reason, even though there are three, you can see them right here. I think there's three secondary mounts, at least two on each side that can face forward. I noticed little to no secondaries actually popping off when I was directly bowing. You have to give up a bit of an angle. So as you'll see this game, I'm basically turning away from a lot of people and they're gonna be angled away. And actually ended up with that last salvo not being the best uh, trade here, but we'll take a Missouri for Missouri any day of the week. We'll take a one for one trade. Um, but you'll see me play this a lot, this style of play of just angling away instead of bow tanking because it just seems like those secondaries just don't want to shoot forward. I don't know why. That's what I was kind of hoping for. But if you set up this, you got a lot of them on the side. I mean, there's a lot of secondaries and they will pop off again, 65 hits, but I had to give up basically an entire broadside to this guy. But as soon as I got that turn, you can start using that armor to angle away and be kind of that pseudo, uh, you see a lot of turpits do it. Uh, or not trip, it's a Yamato's do that. We'll actually angle away and use their god tier armor for that. But um, again, uh, being that Bowen, I wish there was a bit more. So it does make you play outside the normal that is uh, 
um, that is the USM Battleships, which I guess is all right. Change up the play style. It's unique. It's different. Again, I don't think this ship is the strongest tier 8. I don't think this is the new the goat of tier 8s. Um, I don't think it's even the best USN Battleship, uh, but it could be fun. I was having fun. It makes you play different. You know, if you're playing the Alabama, or if you have the North Carolina and you buy the Alabama, it's basically just, it, there are differences before somebody freaks out about how different the ships are. Yes, I understand they are different ships, but they play, their the play style is almost identical. Um, this one, you're going to play a little bit different. And um, I guess I respect that for being something, you know, make it, make you play a little bit, a little bit of a different setup. And um, right here, we can do guns on one, secondaries on the other. And being within secondary range of a Tirpitz and a uh, Massachusetts is going to be nasty for these guys. But instead of being able to just bow tank, yeah, there's going to be a little bit of trouble here um, with all this extra stuff. But we got a lot of forces going in. But you'll start seeing some massive secondary hits. And, and the only time that this really happened, and as you can see right here, if I was in Alabama, I'd probably get a few more of these planes out of the sky. As you can see, there's an entire fleet of... Uh, Taiho planes, and we've gotten two. Um, you know, with the AA module, the AA range, we would have gotten a little bit more being able to stack into that. Um, so that's a bit of a downside. But again, out of all those, we only got three. So you just don't have the the slots and stuff that to be able to take that. So you're still gonna be better than German AA, but you won't have that that full blown AA spec that you normally would when it comes to USN that you're really used to. We got we ended up getting five out of that. You know, if you're if you've ever played USN battleships, you would kind of expect more. Um, one thing you're doing with this ship, though, is you are trying to get within range as much as possible. That Taiho was extremely lucky that <laughs> that's all he took there. But you're trying to find opportunities where you can go ham. And our Minsk is going to go in and just ripple fire towards the Taiho, and hopefully he'll get him down with his 600 life and within all these range of ships. Um, you know how that never works out, but he will try his best. And I always, I always have a tough time figuring out. Uh, and as you can see, um, uh, the one of the, my div mates says this game is weird, and actually, this was actually a really weird game. Um, but two uh, secondary monsters moving in, and right now we're. I just want you guys to kind of see how this damage adds up. So we have sixty-six thousand damage right now. At about ten minutes in, we've been trying to get into a good spot. Every time we move south, then they rotate north. Every time I rotate north, then they rotate south. But um, this is kind of the push that we needed to do right at the end. And this is something that okay, well yeah, if I was in the Alabama, which I think is overall a better ship, would I have been able to do this? So maybe this is where the ship is going to shine, and it's on that push that you need to do damage. One thing we can really do here is, as I said, secondaries on one, guns on the other. So look at the rain of secondaries this thing can at least pump out. We're going to give up a little bit more broadside than we normally would, but I can put the secondaries on the Kronstadt, guns on the room. So splitting that up, and again, our CV was basically non-existent this whole game, which was a bit of a bummer. Um, wishing I had a little bit more AA, but you just can't. You have to give up that, that straight-up USN AA to really be a bit more towards... Um, the secondary build, which, you know, is fine. That's your trade-off, and you can be very successful. But we're going to start watching that damage. Again, about less than a minute ago, we were at 66k, and uh, we're going to start doing the work. Now, this is what the Nurse Fuse is. This is what Nurse Fuse is going to be able to do, is making these secondaries very, very viable at just pumping out tons and tons of damage. So, uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, the CV is going to bomb our guy. Again, our CV was pretty non-existent so far this game. Um, it was Essex versus Taiho, and uh, we got the short, we got the short draw on the CV players, which tends to happen, right? The only good CV is the one on the enemy team, and we'll try to work this. But this is the fun of of secondary play style, and right there, close quarters expert, and uh, again, it's work in progress. So you can't see it. Um, but this is the fun, especially with manual uh, secondaries, is just clicking and f set it and forget it. That's all you have to do. It's like we're making a pot roast. Um, all you have to do uh, is is really just set it and forget it. Click on something and focus on something else. If you're focusing secondaries on something, unless it really has to die like a destroyer, um, what you can do is be a two-time threat. And right now, I think in the current game, it's really tough for German battleships to be 
super successful. I feel like German battleships have a tough time in the current meta. And they're not bad ships, but compared to like the US Sunlays, they really stand no chance in a lot of situations. So seeing this type of playstyle in a basically a stronger nation for battleships is cool to see. Is very, very cool to see. Um, but right now, I mean, these guys just stand no chance. And again, we're still pushing in. This is a tough one. So less than what, just over two minutes ago, we had 66K and we're up to 128 so far. But again, right now, we're going to get this going. As we can see, the Gnaiz is pushing that way, but we're just going to turn and get those secondaries, use that armor. And, you know, this guy stands no chance in the long run. So main guns on him, secondaries on him, and just watch the fireworks. There's not much uh, you really need to do here. Again, the biggest drawback of this ship is what it takes for the ship to work. And that's a high-level captain. Um, you can be semi-successful with it. Uh, at the, Again, as, as I said, as we rotate north, there's nothing up here anymore. Because all the ships are south. As soon as we rotate south, there's all the ships up north. Um, but, I mean, 33. Dude, we're getting the fires. We had four fires from this. Um, you know, another 20k dunked up this guy. There's just nothing he can really do. Um... But it's it's fun. Is this ship going to be the strongest at tier eight? No. Is it going to be fun? Yeah, I think the ship can be a lot of fun. It's a lot. It's different. You're tanking. You're playing that play style. Let's say a lot of people like and dislike the uh, the German battleships, and the reason being that um, the German battleships are uh, um, they're. Depending on who you ask, they don't tank very well. They tend to take high alpha damage, and they're big fat battleships, so they're easily picked on. And this is going to be kind of that in-between ship of pseudo-German playstyle with the uh, USN, basically, framework of just being this really, really, really good um, armored battleship. You have the Alabama battleship. Now, originally, I didn't like this ship, but that's because I wasn't running this really, I would say, pretty expensive low or pretty expensive captain. And what I mean by that is just... Honestly, you're not going to see the full potential of this ship until you get an 18-point captain. And just so few people have that. And that's, I think, one of the biggest drawbacks. Um, you know, you can go in. And I think what I had one game when one game where there was uh, only AFT was before I switched into this this actual, this, like, specific captain. Um, I think I had, and I was within range of stuff the entire time. I think I had, like, 20 secondary hits. So, as you can see, we have 10 times that. But it requires a high-level captain, so um, take that with what you have. But, you know, if you really like it, it's a great trainer. It's at Tier 8, so you're going to make a decent amount of credits. Tier 8 credits for Tier 8 premiums, which is great. Um, it's a great USN trainer if you're working up towards that. And with the, uh, you know, the switch to the lines and all that kind of stuff, you can, you know, use it as a trainer there, too. Um, and still, basically, you're in Alabama. You're in North Carolina. Um, that's just a little less accurate. If you just play the ship straight up, you can still be successful. The first game I played this with the, with not the captain I have now, I mean, we got seven kills and we did like 150k damage. You know, you can still, straight up by itself, it's a decent battleship. You know, it's just a weaker Alabama if you look at it that way. But with all of this added, you start having some other weapons and you start having that. Again, I know I'm I know I'm saying it over and over and over and people in chat are like, ah, quit repeating yourself, me Jash. But I would just want to show the emphasis on this is what I think the problem of the ship is. And it's just requiring so much to make a ship work. But the base is there, you know, you can still do mad work and just watch farm damage, you know, it's gonna be it. You are gonna need certain situations um, where things to go right, and I, what I mean by that is you're going to need ships that are kind of pushing in. We got lucky with matchmaking. Tier 8 matchmaking It is what it is right now and uh, could potentially be a problem. But overall, two, over 2 million potential damage, which is awesome. We were pretty aggressive, so we got 40k off spotting and just massive, massive secondary hits. So um, just going over this damage is pretty nutty. So the post battle screen, almost 600,000 credits, which is awesome. That's without any extra flags, just purely the ship itself. Um, 171k damage. We still got 14 planes. We probably would have been pretty close to 30, if not more, if we were in our normal setup. Uh, but still, 14 planes, not too bad. 229 uh, target hits, uh, three kills, you know, six fires. That all that kind of good stuff. Top of the team, which is great. Um, but one thing I want to really look at is the secondary. 229 hits for almost 53,000 damage with um, a 23 and a half k off of fires. So that's you know you're looking at almost 75,000 over 75,000 damage 
from purely the secondaries. So upside of this ship is the secondaries are great if you can have the right captain. Downside is the captain takes um, a lot to get there and most people just won't be able to get that captain to make this all the way successful of a ship. Um, but still, if you can do it, it's this ship will be fun. Will it be the best? No, but it will be a unique play style for the USN. Getting the USN out of its um, kind of bow tanky uh, gameplay that can be kind of that can grow kind of old, but it's effective. Um, this is kind of that unicorn for the USN line to make you play differently and can be fun, um, especially if you don't like overall the German battleships, but you like the USN and you want a bit of a different flavor. Um, but anyways, guys, overall, I think the, the Massachusetts, uh, can be a fun ship and I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, again, work in progress. So things are subject to change. I don't think much will change with this ship. And I think you'll basically, what you see is what you get in the end. Um, and I'm glad they got it away from the original Massachusetts, which was basically a copy pasta of the Alabama with some slight differences. I know Zoop will be mad. He hates when people say that. Um, but they were basically the same thing. But anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.